I went to those Mount in the garage uh, before my wife left to get me my birthday cake and some other stuff because today's my birthday. She said that it might be a good idea if I uh, <clears throat> give you guys a little bit of a uh, explain to you what happened yesterday and what can happen to you when you're not ready. Uh, front of the house, bushes. This is the ghetto where I live in. Won't show you too much. It's a 2017 Toyota 86 base model. Uh, I always wanted a sports car, but because I was uh, trying to get to where I was retired, um, I never would buy anything that I couldn't afford or keep a, I would never keep a loan for the, like if it was a three or five year loan, I would never keep it that long. So this is called a trickle charger. This keeps your battery topped off at all times. And what that does is one of the things it does is it keeps your tire pressure indicator from going off. This is a, this is a three car garage, but I converted the, these houses notoriously don't have any storage. So I converted one for extra cleaning supplies and crap. We were going to just store Christmas tree, all that kind of stuff and just tools. I'll, I'll unscrew that, uh, next week. Um, uh, anyways, <clears throat> I used to have what's called a uh, century lane, which means I could take an express, I could take a vehicle that's cleared through the uh, immigration system and maybe take five or six minutes. So uh, the honest thing that happened is that I got into a fist fight, uh, which I won, but there's the uh, entrance. There's a front door, and that's how you get in there. There's an atrium into the hallway. That's a bathroom right there, clock, all that kind of stuff. So anyways, <clears throat> uh, there's a, a thing to where you can see board. It's called border wait times. Here's the uh, kitchen. There's the island. I'll show you out here. Table. That's the uh, not, not the formal table. Anyways, it's just a kitchen table. That's a pool again. It's kind of jacked up. There's the backyard, blah, 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 blah. House has like seven skylights in it. There is living room that is Brazilian cherry wood or rosewood. Grill out back. There's the back deck. Plants, da, 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 da. Watching, watching the Pat McAfee show. There is, we already passed one bathroom. There's another bathroom. Uh, if you're visiting, that's where you would end up staying. And here is a sauna. Rest of the house like that. And I'm, I'm just trying to collect my thoughts because I get upset. Uh, I had to fight last night. So anyways, uh, here's the most important room in any man's castle. And these are uh, free weights. Uh, I do some rubber band exercises in that, but I honestly believe there's some of the stuff I used to do. Blah, 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 blah. Anyways, long story short, take it back here to the house. We're going down the back of the house to the master bedroom. Fans going, beds made. Uh, those are, yes, that's a, never mind. Doesn't matter what that is. Those are weapons. Self-defense. Anyways, closet, walk-in closet on that side. Jet tub, TV. This leads out to the patio and the rest. That's a, I use it for boxing drills. Da, 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 da. Jet tub, shower, another bathroom, my sink, her sink. Um, let me go and sit down and tell you what happened. So because of that, they, one of the times I was going through the century lane, they seized my stuff, put me out, put me in handcuffs. Well, they treated me like a, like I was some sort of asshole for uh, winning a fight I didn't fucking start at a movie theater. So anyways... Uh, w once it was, the case was dismissed, uh, they told me I could reapply to, uh, get my century lane back in. Uh, I just not, I'm not fucking doing that anymore. I, and they were not pleasant when they arrested, God damn it, I gotta move it. Anyway, show you over here. I'll show you, there's fireplace over here, gas fireplace. I am a four size, so that is my clan uh 
the um, phrase in Latin is the repair of ruin. Uh, a lot of our guys were engineers, but anyway, it's not a famous clan or anything like that. Um, let me move these over here. Some plants looking out across the backyard. Skylights, fans. Any, anyways, so I'll, I'll try to get to the book. Uh, I'll try to get to the point. And I'm getting a little upset thinking about it because um, here I'll show you. E even you, though I can't have a gun in Mexico, I carry this. I carry that with me, and I carry what's called a knife with a tanto blade on it. All right, it's a heavy knife. And I know how to use it. I know how to use knuckles. So anyways, I have those in my pocket. And I always carry a mouthpiece with me. I always carry a mouthpiece with me just in case. Uh, anyways, this is a uh, practice knife for me to practice my drills. This is called Suk Suk. With the thumb on the top to keep it from going away, that's called Pakal. Uh, it's a Filipino martial art. So anyways, <clears throat> so the line's like, it's like almost 10 o'clock at night. And uh, my wife takes us down to the uh, downtown exit. And, and she thought maybe we'd wait 10 minutes in line. And the line's like, they're saying it's going to take us four or five hours if, if I don't get out of the car and walk across the bridge. So my wife, who has a century lane because she doesn't fight, I'm the guy who's supposed to fight. And um, so she lets me out of the car downtown and uh, she drives you back and gets, she was already waiting for me because she gets to use a century lane. She just blew, blew through. Um, so I have my uh, uh, luggage with me. It's on rollers because you have to process with your luggage that you can. She'd get in a lot of trouble if I left the luggage in the car, but it was mine. So all that being said, it's two blocks for me to get to the entrance of the Mexican side of the bridge that I have to cross, walk up and over the highway to get back into the United States. And in between those two blocks are where all of the men that are drug addicts from Venezuela, Colombia, El Salvador, all of them places are living on the streets and there everybody that's walking through there's there's like little gangs of four and five of these guys that are coming up and touching people on the pockets and they you know they just try to surround you and all that kind of stuff and so many people aren't 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 accustomed to fighting that uh you you control your breathing you keep your head down Anyway, so they come up on me, and there's four guys. And but by the way, they speak Spanish. You can tell that they're – anyway, it doesn't fucking matter. And they say, mandarme su – no, dame su maleta. Give me your give me your luggage. Give me your thing. And I, I just shook my head. I didn't say anything. And I'm reaching into my pocket. <laughs> and um, I have my knife in my right hand. And But I didn't, I didn't unlock the blade. And I'm looking at them. And I, I'm not letting them flank me. That means that the four of them are here in front of me. But I'm, I won't let them. I'll just keep backing up. If they try to, like, flank me, I'll just back up a little bit more, back up a little bit more. And I'm reaching in, and I won't talk to them. I won't say anything to them, but I won't break eye contact with you. You don't, look, you don't fucking look away. We're going to get in a fight. You know as a man you're going to get into a fight. And listen, you have to fight sometimes. And you have to fight. And if you're going to fight, you have to fight to win. And you can't just show up one day and expect to be Denzel Washington in the uh, Equalizer, John Wick or Jason Bourne or, in, in, or 007 or Idris Alba in uh, Luther or any of those other guys. You can't expect to be Jack. And you can't expect to be um, a ninja badass if you don't train. I, I get punched in the face two or three times a week. Uh, I hope, anyways, anyways. So I'm not your average old white guy that they think they're going to just roll over. And I only have enough money to, to pay the fee to walk across the bridge and maybe $20 extra. And, of course, my ID and my passport. on And uh, I back up, pull my mouthpiece out, and I put it in, and the guy 
the, the fourth uh, the fourth guy. So we go one, two, three, four. This guy kind of backs away. So he's not on my flank on this side. So I start turning. Anyway, let me just get to the fucking point. So the big guy, and he's loud and he's drunk or he's drunk or he's high or anything else. And by this time I have my, here I'll show you. By this time, by this time, even though I'm still holding on to my, even though I'm still holding on to my uh, maleta, uh, the handle of my uh, luggage, which has four wheels on it, I have this on my hand. I have my mouthpiece on and my hand on, hand on my knife. So he comes over and he reaches out to touch, grab my shirt. And what I did, how, how I throw my first punch is I'll take my thumb and I'll hang it out like this. And I'll scoop it into your eye and and wrap it across your eye. And then I hit him as hard as I could with my knuckles. And he didn't fall down. He went down to one knee. And he's holding his eye like this. And he's, ay, Dios mio, which is, oh, my God. And he's got a cut on his face. So now this guy is gone. So it's just this guy in one knee and one other guy like that. And he put his hands up. Nope, no mas. <laughs> Took my bag and I sped walked. That's it. I'm not, I'm not telling you that it was like I was doing backflips or anything like that. And yes, I hit him first. Yes, I hit him before he could reach for me. Yes, before he could touch me or anything or those type of things. And that's it. And I hit him as hard as I could and I stuck my thumb as far into his eye as I could because at that point in time, young man, that's either you. Going home like I'm sitting right now having a, a gin and tonic in the afternoon. And yes, it is my birthday. I'm officially 58 today. But if it's between them and you, they're going to either the hospital or the fucking morgue. There's no pity, no mercy. And if you don't believe at least four times in your life you're going to be in a violent encounter, you're terribly wrong. And I can't tell you, one of the other things I'm supposed to tell you is about what happened in um, Cabo San Lucas. There was a guy there that couldn't fight. He literally was probably 24, 25 and was throwing hands like this. And ah, he didn't know what the fuck to do. He got destroyed in front of his girl. And you would not believe I'm pretty sure she doesn't want anything else to do with them. Um, women can say whatever the fuck they want. You can try to be modern and independent and like that, but you can't fucking kick my ass. I don't think there's there may be some women on planet Earth that can kick my ass in a straight up fight, but I don't fucking fight <laughs> in straight up mode. You're getting your eye poked. I may try to, you know, it doesn't take much to rip a rip an ear off a human being. So anyway, let me just let me just stop. So anyway, but it was quick. And be, listen, if you know or you think you're going to get into a fight, I expect you to hit that person first. I expect you to kick them in the balls, punch them in the throat, gouge them in the eye, and move on. You don't stand around, stand over them, help them up, give them a hug, talk to them or anything like that. Fuck, get the fuck out of there because the cops are coming. So anyways, I get over there, pay my stuff. My, my fucking wrist hurts <laughs> from cracking the guy. Anyway, so that's it. And, and, and here's, here's why I'm doing the video. At least four times, you're going to have to fight. Four. You're going to have to fight. Well, let me put it this way. You should have fought. A biter... A man who's willing to stand his ground and fight, even if you lose, you die one time. Cowards die thousands upon thousands upon thousand times in their life. And they have to live with the what if. Well, and they have to go over it in their mind, you know, where they're the winner. But that's not how it is. Listen, you simply have to fight. And I'd rather see you fight and win and accept the consequences of that and move on with your life. Like, you know what? Anyways, it doesn't fucking matter. Did I tell the border guys, ICE agents at the border that I got in a fight? I'd say fucking shit to them. Showed them my passport, told them what was in my bag, and they let me go. I 
they weren't there. They can't do anything to help you. There's no reason to tell them your story because you know what? What if I hurt that guy? And all of a sudden now the Mexicans want to talk. Let me just fucking. I know I hurt him. <laughs> anyway, so it is. it is what it is. All that to say this. I would rather see you fight, stand your ground, and lose than for you to be cowardly. You owe that to yourself, and you owe it to yourself to learn how to box and wrestle at a minimum. Box, wrestle at a minimum. And it's a perishable skill, which means it's a skill you have to practice. And it'll keep you in shape. And as you get older, it'll help you with your twitch muscles, which will degenerate if you don't use them. It's why I do box jumps. And I have bad wheels. I do box jumps. I do, uh, what do we call it, the eight-count push-up. But people, you jump up in the air, you come down, you do a push-up, and then you pop back up anyway. So I call it the eight-count push-up. But then I'm, I'm fucking old. So I, I'm telling you. You don't want to live with the shame for the rest of your life because you wouldn't fight. I don't care if you lose. I don't care if you bite the motherfucker. Bite him on the ear. Pull his thing off. Stick your finger in his eye. Punch him in the nose. Rip him in his face. Pull his hair. I don't care about any of that stuff. But you got to fight back. You can't fucking hit pause or stop or reset in real life. And let me tell you something. You don't want to be one of those guys that has to face somebody, especially a family, and they know you're a fucking coward. You can't be counted on. So it is what it is. That's part of our primal nature as men to protect. All right. Love you guys. This is unvarnished. Yes, I swear. Um, I'm really not a good guy. Um, but I'll do what I can to help you. But I guarantee you, if you needed a friend, I'd definitely want your back. All right? Love you guys. Do what I can to help you. I'm not going to take anything from you. So if you see me <laughs> getting arrested for doing something to somebody, anyways, it is what it is. I don't care. Like a fart in a G-string from West Texas, El Paso. I'm out of here. Bye-bye.